This segment of the news is brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. In this week's court report, the Pahrump woman who pleaded guilty to torturing and killing a neighbor's dog, all while involving her own children in the crime, has had her sentencing hearing continued yet again, this time to March 17th. Maria Cristina Furtado was scheduled to be sentenced February 3rd after a previous continuance. Furtado is said to have taken her children, one then 15, the other only three years old, with her to a desert area, then executed a stolen dog. Furtado is even said to have made her teenaged child shoot that animal while it was hanging upside down. The Pahrump woman arrested after a fatal DUI crash that killed a bride-to-be at Honeysuckle Street and South Dandelion Street had a misdemeanor traffic case in Justice Court Monday. Ashley Wynn originally faced the charge of speeding in a school zone, which occurred a little more than a month prior to her felony DUI fatal accident charge. But now Wynn, who was not present in court, has had her attorney enter a guilty plea on her behalf to an amended charge of illegal parking with a recommended fine of $240 to be paid in 30 days. This case has a follow-up in Justice Court April 7th. Wynn's fatal DUI case was bound over to District Court and is scheduled March 13th. The man who allegedly sexually assaulted a female in his residence after smoking meth and having an argument with that woman who reportedly refused to have sex with him had his preliminary hearing continued to March 6th per prosecution request. Probable cause was found against Dylan Palmer, who has an active cash bail or bond of $100,000. Palmer is charged with unlawful use of a controlled substance, sexual assault, false imprisonment, and sexually motivated coercion. He has a follow-up on September 29th. Palmer also has a separate companion case with a different date of occurrence in which he's charged with domestic battery and has a status hearing scheduled to answer that charge March 6th. Two members of a trio arrested in connection to an armed robbery at the Horizon Market on East Highway 372 were both recently present in court. Joseph Tomas Nelson and Lucas Marshall Partain are both charged with robbery with the use of a deadly weapon, burglary with the assistance of a child while in possession of a firearm, conspiracy to commit robbery, and conspiracy to commit burglary. Nelson had his attorney substituted due to a conflict in representing that defendant, and the court converted the previously set preliminary hearing on February 15th to a pretrial hearing and set a preliminary hearing date of March 8th. Nelson was remanded to the custody of NCSO $55,640 cash or bond. According to court records, Partain is in custody, $100,000 cash, $200,000 bond, and also has a preliminary hearing set March 8th. This has been your court report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 46. Thanks so much, Unette. T-Mobile and Metro PC were down last week. Valley Electric Association has an update on how they helped get the phones back on. Cellular service was knocked out for almost four days recently. Valley Communications Association, which is a part of the EA, assisted in bringing Pahrump's cellular service customers back online. According to a press release from the EA, technicians and engineers from Valley Electric Associations, Inc. were instrumental in getting Pahrump customers of a cellular carrier back online, following damages from the effects of recent storms on Mount Potosi. Wireless customers were knocked out of service last week when the weight of heavy snow from January storms collapsed an equipment shelter located on Mount Potosi. Also damaged were microwave antennas, which helped transmit cellular signals from Las Vegas to Prump. VEA members began notifying Not the cooperative of cellular issues, issues cellular on Monday, January 30th, from VEA and Valley Communications Association in the form of a temporary fiber optic line to replace the microwave units that were damaged by the snow. VEA engineers were able to provision a network path from Las Vegas to Prump and out of the main tower site at Homestead and Gamebird within 48 hours. The new fiber optic circuit restored cell service for those affected, many of whom are VEA members. This is Caitlin Boyer reporting for News 46.
And they did it. They yes, got they, did. <laughs> they got the snow there. You know, the, if you go on YouTube, you can just Google Mount Potosi and you can see all those videos of them wow. go out there. It's amazing, the technical swing. <laughs> <and, yeah. laughs> it's great. Well, we'll have more news after the break.